Shout out to Dope Generations again for the merch. I appreciate y'all. <coughs> y'all go check them out at Instagram. On Instagram, at Dope Generation for the merch. I appreciate y'all. So we're going to be talking about the Pepsi Cola Superfan New Orleans in the 90s. And how Liddy used to be in the Superfan. I remember the Superfan when I was young. It used to be so turned. Every wall used to be in there. You know, it was mainly about just meeting females, getting numbers. You know, who could get the most numbers, you know what I'm saying? That's what we used to do. And I'm quite sure other little cliques used to do it too. You know, we ain't used to really go in. We ain't used to go in the fair at all on no rah-rah stuff. We used to go in the fair to enjoy ourselves. You already know what's good with it, bro. I appreciate you. You already know. St. Bernard in this joint. Yeah, though, man. We used to go to the Pepsi Cola Superfair just to enjoy ourselves, man. Mess with the broads, you know what I'm saying? Get on the rides. We used to try to go in that thing almost every day. But um, eventually all that stopped one particular summer, you know what I'm saying? When um, a little incident took place between Philip and Clara, which is a little set in New Orleans. And a little click out the 17th, which is a big old section of New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? Highly Grove, Gert Town, Nigger Town, Picking Town, you know what I'm saying? And whatever else they got back there, because the 17 is like a real big ward to say it's not a project. But um, this situation took place, I won't say, in 1999, and it reads as follows. On July 29, 1999, the defendant was charged by a grand jury indictment with second-degree murder. He was arraigned and pled not guilty August, August 8, 1999. A 12-member jury found him guilty as charged. June 27, 2000, he filed motions for new trial and post-verdict judgment of acquittal, which were denied September 15, 2000. He was sentenced to life imprisonment at hard labor without the benefit of parole or probation or suspension of sentence. He filed a motion for reconsideration of sentence, which was denied. He filed a motion for appeal. The records was logged in this court September 25, 2001. He filed a brief June 12, 2002. The state filed a brief July 23, 2002, and a supplemental brief July 25, 2002. So it say facts. Alan Dillette, 19, was killed outside the New Orleans Superdome following an event known as the Superfell on June 7, 1999. Y'all with me? He was shot from he was shot from the back from some distance in a manner that indicated he may have been running when he was wounded. Officer Bradley Tollison said that when he arrived at the scene, there was a large crowd leaving the fair and that several of the victims, friends, and families were present. Those people said they were with the victim, heard the shots, and were running with him when he was hit. No witness could identify the perpetrator, Tollison said. Tollison learned. Tollison said he learned from, the, he, he learned from Detective Davalier, De, who was also on the scene, that two black men who had literally left the scene reported to them that Two perpetrators had driven by in a red 1993 Oldsmobile with primer paint on the right door. A 911 tape was played to the jury, which revealed that minutes after the shooting, the car was described as a 1993 Oldsmobile Cutlass with primer paint on the passenger door. Now, <clears throat> Detective Kaufman, Kaufman of the, with the Homicide Division took over the case. He learned from Detective Norman McCart that the suspect's nickname was Chevy or Devon. He spoke with the, he spoke with Detective Jerry Kahn and Jerry Fall and Walter Powers of the Second District. He learned that Duval Chevy was Duvon Hurst. He prepared a, a, a photographic lineup. He also obtained a search warrant for the defendant's house and an arrest warrant for the, for his person. During a search of the house, he found a receipt for Johnny's Auto Repair, a car body shop that was a short walk from the defendant's residence. He found a vehicle inside the shop and spoke to the owner of the shop, Johnny Yarrow. Yarrow said he had pulled the car inside the shop from the street that morning, June 8th, and that all through the car had been at the 
shop since June 3rd. It had been left on the street unsecured prior to that time. The area of the car, the area where the car was, the area of the, the area of the car where the spots of the primer had been, was being worked on. A search of the vehicle revealed that it was registered to Louis J. Selva Jr. and Devonder Hurst. A picture of a man holding a large amount of cash was also seized from the vehicle. Later, Kaufman went to the second district to speak to William Vanado, who was in custody at the time. Vanado told investigators that he wanted to speak to the investigator handling the Superdome incident. During his conversation, Van identified the uh, uh, identified the defendant as the killer. Vanderdo said he lived at the same neighborhood as the victim and had been at the Superdome the night of the the night the incident occurred. He identified the defendant in the photographic lineup and said his nickname was Chavez or Chevy. Y'all can hear me. The defendant turned himself in in a statement. He said that on the night of the crime. He had gotten a ride to the Superdome with Albert Luckety and Corey Madison, who owned a red four-door Buick Skylark in which they were driving. After the fair, the three went to rallies on Carrollton Avenue and then went home. He said he was not present during the shooting. Corey Madison's mother contacted Kaufman. Kaufman smoked with Madison. He learned that the defendant had attempted to call Madison 10 times from Orleans Parish Prison after he was arrested for this crime. So this 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 situation right here, this is the situation that this was the incident where um Philip and Clara and the 17 got into it at the Super Fair. And um prior to that incident, there was a retaliation, there was some type of retaliation thing going that, that took place and somebody was, you know what I'm saying, killed and a big old indictment went down and a lot of people off Philip and Clara was picked up today and a, and a couple of them was given real time behind that situation. So nobody really won in that situation, you know. I know JJ was killed by the Super Fair Long Live JJ. He was off Philip and Clara. Cool dude, you know. Free Keep. I know Keep had been caught like 25 off that. He'd been down for a while now and I know a couple more people had got caught up with that situation. So it's like everybody lost at the end of the day and they took the Super Fair away. You feel me? We ain't had the Super Fair since. <clears throat> you feel me? I know a lot of y'all remember that incident that took place at the Super Fair in 1999. But um, yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot that turned out that took place behind that. Like you know, a lot of people lost their life. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, family members, and you know what I'm saying, relatives was hurt behind things that took place, revolving around that situation that took place at the Super Fair. So it's like at the end of the day, like I said, man, nobody went. The streets always went or the court or the courthouse or the graveyard, you know. So that's why I say none of none of these things I speak on or none of these stories I tell are to be glorified or to be or to try to be reenacted under any circumstances, any form of fashion. Because like I said, you know, to go through it is to live it and to live it, it come with a whole bunch of baggage, you know, trauma. You know, nightmares, the late nights, can't sleep, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just a lot, the jail time, you know, the losing loved ones, not being out here when you're doing jail time, the losing all your partners to the, to the streets, it's like a lot come with that. So any kid out there I could reach with the stories I tell and anybody that I could, any any kid or adult that I could, that I could reach, you know, I'm blessed to do that. And I think I think the creator that I'm able to do that because a lot of people now here today to share their story. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all for tuning in and listening when I do go live and when I do, you know, do what I do. You know, that mean a lot to me. This like therapy to me, you know. What up, what it brought up? I don't really remember, bro. I'm going to have to look into that. You know what I'm saying? I remember the dude, I think his name was Caveman, the guy that got killed at John Mack, if I ain't mistaken. That's what they that's what they used to call him. Me either, brother. 
to rhyme either, bro. I don't I don't remember that either. And I'm quite sure they had some at the Superfell, but I know it was diamond, you know, it was a diamondy color thing. Like a lot of color people went to the Superfell for sure. Real talk, huh? The Superdome really used to be jumping too, for sure. For sure, for sure. But I know y'all about to be with me, rocking with me for a second. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to jump back on here. Yeah, you did. Quinta, um, I, I know, I know, I know one of the chicks that got burned. You know, she a close friend of mine. We ain't, I ain't seen her in a while, but, you know, we was always called her and always cool, you know. Yeah, she, um, she, one of them ain't get burnt that bad, though. I think her arm just got burnt up a little. But another, another, you know what I'm saying? The other female, she wasn't so lucky, you know. She got burnt real bad. But they got a lot of, they got a lot of money from that too. Yeah, they got a lot of money behind that. She done had all type of cars, Jags, like all top of the line, Porsche trucks, everything. You know, she got it. They, they, they get in the bag for the rest of their life. Nine times out of ten, you know. They getting it broken down into increments. You know what I'm saying? Getting it, you know getting paid in lump sums that's crucial because you could break that down and tell you how much they settled for and gave them you feel me i know it was a couple of m's you know you 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 can invest and you could go a long way off that yeah she used to be moving around she used to be uptown too you know we used to i used to be clubbing with her every weekend too all of us you know what i'm saying i used to mess with one of her friends like all of them was tight all of us used to go out to the club together on the weekend if you know you know <clears throat> but y'all stay plugged, man. I'll be right back with something else with y'all, man. With something else for y'all. Y'all get in that comment section. Hit that like button. Make sure the notifications turned on. Hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And tell a friend to come out me, man. I got a lot of content, good content. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to drop something else for y'all, too. So y'all stay plugged. I'm going to give me a little grub right fast. Hit the yeah, and I'll be right back. Slump 1200 GGI mob shit.